hey, welcome everyone. Welcome to the GM Ashley stream. We got some goodies. Yum, 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 yum games I got for you guys. Let me start from the beginning of this one right here. Thank you, Yar, for subscribing in tier one. This, these are the, these are the delish. This, these games, you're going to be like, ooh, but they're going to have two themes to watch out for. Two themes, you're going to like the, the two things. You might, some of you might be like, mm, yeah, but watch carefully. All right. Thank you very much for being a fan from Iran. Much appreciated. Now, let us look at this game here. We see it start off, starts off with d4, e6, knight f3, c5, an unorthodox way of getting to a Sicilian. But now black continues to be unorthodox and play with a6. And it's known here, you develop your pieces. Bishop attacks knight, you back it up. Bishop back to e7. Bishop e3. White has great development. Now here is a critical point in the game. White has a choice right now to do two things. One is to put the knight on c3. You can castle right now as well if you want to. But put the knight on c3 and play more dynamically. Or play for space with this move, c4. White played c4. This position switches the formation in what is known as a Maroxe bind. Pawn on c4, pawn on e4, making it difficult for black to execute d5, or purportedly making it difficult for black to execute d5 without punishment. That's the whole point of the Maroxe bind, is to stifle black's position. Now here, it turns out black could probably play d5. If you're a strong player, you might want to play this move. But the only problem, of course, is this capture, 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 and capture. Knight to c3 will gain a tempo eventually. This knight will gain a tempo, so you might castle so you don't hang your g pawn to this queen. But the knight's headed to c3, and you get a small tempo. Now black can be aggressive here after this move. Black can play for bishop f5, so that knight c3 doesn't get that that oof, tempo. And this critical move right here, bishop f5, might give black a slightly worse game. Slightly worse. But playable. You know, you still got to develop your pieces, so black might be concerned there. Black decided not to go for that and instead play the move knight f6. And now after knight to c3, d6, black gives up all hopes of playing the move d5 and gives white the space. This is something that happens a lot. And you can play a different kind of chess. Uh, this is going to be more a hedgehog setup. Black plays knight to e5, chases the piece back, so that b6. And now black is headed to this square with bishop to b7, hitting on that square. The knight on c6 is not a great piece in the Maroxe, so black wasn't worried about this setup. And now it's up to white. White has a very aggressive position. White can play a move like g4. I know it's scary, right in front of your king. G4, though, is a possibility to be able to play for G5. And this attack with putting a bishop back on D3 and getting your queen over here is well known. All right? But he played F5. A different strategy entirely. See you, Yipper. Have a good time. We're going for some sharp chess today. So watch out when you guys see this game. So black took. And now the move knight D4. Very subtle subtle move knight to d4 the point here is you're hitting the pawn you want to put a knight on f5 not a pawn which would be ugly or even your rook which would allow for some disco attack later but a knight on f5 will be sniffing around that king as it hits the g7 square there's also a little knight c6 nibble that's about to happen in the position so black had to pay attention to both so black plays knight e5, back to e5, stopping this move, knight c6. And now white played knight takes. Now, when I see a knight on f5, my instinct is like, you have to die. Like, you know, you're not hanging out in my position. This move, you got to go. You literally have to die. Now, of course, you're giving up your light squared bishop. White's going to have this bishop on e2. But here goes a very salient situation to what we were talking about. Black has a decision to make. No amount of puzzle rush is going to help you here. You understand? 
this is not what I'm, I'm not trying to again I'm knocking puzzle rush even though I just did commentary for three hours on it but no amount of puzzle rush helps you here puzzle rush is for a different type of game different kind of situation we'll see that situation shortly this is about estimating is this knight on f5 so strong that I have to get rid of it and give up my very important light square bishop or do I tolerate the knight all right that is the question right now black decided to tolerate the knight by castling saying you can keep this piece no big deal bad decision bad decision right off the top because white didn't leave the knight there for any amount of time white took on e7 and picked off a pawn now this is a puzzle rush situation thank you for the gift of the pawn but it's not done it's not done it looks like it's just a blunder all right just a blunder. Somebody's asking, why can't black take with pawn fe three moves ago? Why can't black take pawn with pawn? Didn't black take a pawn? Oh, you you wanna you wanna play this position? This position? Mm -mm. Well, <laughs> whenever you want to play like this and allow your king to be sitting in the middle of the board, well, this doesn't win immediately, but this is going to be some food, okay? Rook c1 is coming. Moves like queen d4 will come. Your pawn will hang. Your king is stuck in the middle. This attack, you can grab material, but woo, this is where people, again, not a tactical situation. This is an estimation of the position where you say, I got material. I got material, but so what? I'm up two pawns. You might be excited. I got two extra pawns. I'm excited. But man, white is far more excited. This king looks delish. This attack on the C file looks great. The centralization of the pieces, the pawn's going to drop. I'm not sure this pawn's lasting more than two moves on the board. You're not developed at all. This is material versus dynamics. All right? Material versus dynamics. And that is is what we're talking about. By the way, even here, this is a nice move. You could hit that and hit that. You got this hit. Actually, this is even better. What am I talking about? That's even sweeter. That's 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 boss. Let's leave it at this line. C takes D5 is stupid. I like this. Keep the activity and the threats. So absolutely, this is crushing. Absolutely. This Cheston, you're right. Crushing. Dominant. Dominant. This is killing. This is even more deadly. This, is, this proves everything. So you don't want to grab stuff when you're not developed. All right. So that's why black played 95. And now look at what black had anticipated. Thanks for having me for prime subscription. Black thought black had calculated all this. So we get a little puzzle rush. Knight takes e7. I win a pawn until black plays this move. And black says, no, I'm winning my pawn back. Winning the pawn back. Yes, White saw all this. And this is what White saw. And you're ready. Now we're going to show the extended puzzle rush concept. Ready? It's White who saw the stuff in this position because White played Bishop back to D4. White anticipated taking the pawn, giving the open file, but White A has this Bishop on D4. So Black has no dark square Bishop. And B, White has a tactic coming. And already somebody has spotted it. Ahmad definitely spotted the point. The point is Rook takes on B2. Hello. Rip is answered by boom. Rook takes on F6. By the way, it's not over, y'all. It's not over yet. It's still going. Remember, Black said, you win a pawn, but I'm winning it back. Why he said, okay, I'm going to give it back, but I'm going to sack a piece. Now, first of all, let's just be clear. Queen takes, loses big material to knight d5, hitting the queen, but also the discovered attack on the rook. The themes are, they're playing themselves out. First, it was removing the defender. Let's go over some basic tactics for the beginners out there. The first theme was removing the defender, the overloaded piece. The queen is overloaded. It's guarding this and this. That's the first theme. So white play takes and takes. The queen had to leave. But black now played a skewer, rook to b8, which is better. The skewer 
or the overloaded tactic. White said, I'm retreating because now I'm going to play a sacrifice on F6 leading to a discovered attack on your piece. So tactical themes are playing and just interweaving into the game, but nobody's won material yet. Nobody's won material. Like Queen takes SF's, Queen takes does lose material. This loses material to knight d5. You cannot guard both this and this. That's that's chicken. That's fried chicken right there. But after rook f6, g f6, knight to d5, the queen can go to b7. And in this position, white can take back the exchange and also win a pawn. And so now we get the final point. You think we're not at the final point yet. Take a look because white now has to judge what he wanted out of this game. Thank you, Rocky and Mountain Chess. Thank you. Knight f6 check, king to g7 hitting the knight. Now, of course you can say, well, I'm just take this rook, back my knight up, I'm up a pawn. I'm up a straight pawn, that looks good to me, why not? Right, done. White said, mm -mm. I got other ideas. I got other ideas. Now this move, knight h5 is probably the technically best move in the position with some tactics, with a c5 tactics, according to the engine. This is the best way to play. But I like what White did in the game. White played a human, flesh and blood, had to figure out what to do, plays queen c1. You like, like moves like that, you like. That's a serious chess move, okay? That's a serious chess move. You play like this. This is, this is like artistic. Somebody said something. Vane said, why not rookie two instead of uh, taking on F6? You want to take at a moment when your rook is looking very trapped. Knight D5. I'm hitting your queen. I'm hitting your rook. You still haven't touched this yet. Uh, I'd say I'm, you're going to get hurt. That's what's going to happen in this line, okay? In this line, you're gonna get hurt. So not advisable. So what you just showed though, very, um, thank you for asking that question though. Thank you very much, Vane, for, for, for asking that question because you showed another tactical theme. The tactical theme is the intermediate move, right? The intermediate move, rook takes f6, the sacrifice. Rook, uh, sorry, your, your question is, why not play rook takes e2 right now and in this position by the way there are other tactics here as well in this position black black another tactical theme the kamikaze the rook i'm gonna die anyway says the rook on b2 because i see your tactic why not just sacrifice myself unfortunately there's an in-between move or an intermezzo knight d5 and suddenly your queen's hanging, your rook's hanging, and whatever you do, this rook could even stay here, right? This rook could just sit on this square and laugh because it later he's going to smash your position open as well when you take it. So the sacrifices are not really working in your favor here. I also think there's another line because the rook, the rook is so bad. Like after rook takes e2, what if this rook moved? Now this rook is hanging and it doesn't have any squares to go to. It can only go here, and then a knight d5 could happen. Mm, yeah, this is probably not as good for white as he wants it. But the other line is probably sufficient. I mean, that, that's probably winning as well uh, from a technical standpoint. So rook takes on f6. And let's go with the game. G takes, knight d5. And queen, and a uh, knight f6, and queen c1. I mean, beautiful. A double attack on this piece, right? He wants this. But he's trying to get the queen to g5. This is chess. This is humans playing chess. Playing beautiful ideas move after move. By the way, sacking the bishop. Doesn't even get the material back. But sees the attack is coming in force. Rook takes e2. Okay, you obviously could take on f6. The rook gets taken, but this, look at this. It was just nasty. C5 is coming eventually to undermine your position. If you try to play this out, let's say like this, attacking the bishop. Now we've got, we've got the, the bishop sli slicing this way. This bishop slicing this way. C5 
That's a big pawn moving very fast. C5 coming to undermine your pawn, your piece. Your king is just out there. Just, just out there. Just seriously. Just out there, okay? Ready to be smashed. This is a horrible position. This is pick your poison how you die. This is this kind of position. So just crushing. And don't forget about the attack. White is just, mm, 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 just delish. Everything about the position is great. So queen c1, nice move. Took, check, wake up and smell the coffee. You're about to die. Now this position is over. Black played king to h8, but let's take a look at this move knight g6. There's, there's this different damage you could do in this position. But even here, guys, even here, you've got to work. Because you're going to think, where's my discovery? Right? Now the discovery theme comes up. Do I put the knight on d5 and, and crush on knight d5? And the king goes, maybe the king goes here and, and, and you check him. And okay, wait, that didn't work. Maybe this one. And the king goes back. And you're, where's the win? Where's the win? Can't find the win. What's the deal? What's going on? Like, why, why is this winning? You're down a full rook. White is down a full rook. Here's a discover check. Another theme. The king draws back and you go, okay, maybe queen f6 is winning? I've done it. I've done it. Queen f6 must be winning. Yes. Except I do have to calculate check. Okay, what's this check about? What's, what's going on? Check is possible. Uh, okay, if I take it, I see you can take with the queen and start harassing me. So what if I just move the king in the corner? Let's say I do that just so that you can't play this check and come after me. And now black plays knight to e5 and your threat of queen g7 mate is out the window. It's like, it's gone. <laughs> it was like, what, what, just, what just happened? Where, I thought I was, and now if you take it, black is gonna play queen takes again with check and spoil your whole party. Also the rook is coming to g6 to chase your queen away. So you're like, what, 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 what just happened? I was killing this guy. I was killing him. So then you go back again. All right, let's go back to the top. This is white literally played queen c1 and played into this line, all right? So let's be clear. This is what white thought was going to win. King g7. All right, now what? You can play knight d7. Let's hit the rook. That looks like a good move. Except you're down a rook right now. So did you want to take the rook? Or if the king drops back, can you play queen here and try to win again? Okay, that looks good. That that we're on the right track. This is looking good because we're going to break the diagonal. We're going to break this diagonal down. That's looking good. Like 95. Now we can probably just take this piece and this sack. We're not going to worry about because now we can move and this doesn't do anything because of the beautiful theme. You should know the beautiful check on H8. Very popular tactical concept. King takes his force. Knight takes f7, double check. Let me get that knight right. And after the king moves, mate on a stick. That looks good. That looks good. Let's pull that off. Except, except here, here after knight d7, no, here after knight d7, there is this strange move f6. And now what? <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. I should be able to win this position. My queen's not hanging because I got a pin. Should I just take this rook right here? But, but hold on. Takes. And when I take with check, uh, the king dances. And where's the mate? I can't check him in the corner. I can't check. It. In fact, I don't even have one more check. Even if you brought the rook to the F line, that's not check. Queen shows up to defend. The attack's gone. <laughs> Wait, I, I'm down a piece? Okay, chess is the kind of game you could just lose. You think you're playing well, and you do all these logical things, and then you just lose. Crazy, all right? So <laughs> we're back to this position. What did White do? White played this move I said was beautiful, this queen c1, sacking a rook, because you're giving up a bishop when you're down in exchange. Sacking a rook, check. And black could have just dropped the knight back instead of king here. Black could have dropped the knight back with knight g6.
All right? And by the way, the move you said bishop f6 looks right. It doesn't work either. Uh, bishop f6 after f6 here. Bishop takes on f6 in this position. I mean, there's, there's no pattern. You just, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening to black. Black is perfectly fine. No pattern here at all. In fact, I would say black could even do this move and be perfectly fine because knights defend kings so well when queens are close. That's guarded. That's guarded. That's guarded. I mean, that knight is like <laughs> all day. And black is always threatening this or this. So believe it or not, in this position, after you have done a massive calculation to look at this position, the winning move, you ready? The winning move is rook f1. <laughs> lights out lights out rook f1 is the winning move but it gets worse i'm going to show you it gets worse because if black plays the move bishop to e6 you still have this threat you think you're going to do you're going to just crush black you're going to just there must be a way to crush black do you know what the winning move is here and, and knight h5 also doesn't work, guys. You can try all of them. This f6 move is always getting in your way. f6 is a big problem because the king can disrupt everything and the queen can come along the line. The winning move here, according to the oracle, is c5. Now, what white is saying is, black, you don't have anything to do. I have you in a perfect bind. You have literally zilch to do in this position. Now, if, if I'm a human being, why am I not playing a move like this? That looks like a human move. In fact, you know what? This is strong too. This is strong too. This looks like, this looks like an absolute win. As I'm looking at it, it looks like an absolute win because the king's not getting out. I thought when the rook moved, the king would get out, but it looks like you're going to get screwed. As a matter of fact, yeah, it looks like you're going to get killed. I don't even let you run. And it looks like you're going to get killed. So queen h5. Queen h5 is strong. I, I agree. I agree. This is crushing. This is crushing. So then this position here, this position here before rook f1, queen h5 looks good until the guy plays rook check. <laughs> Again, this darn move because now you can't take the rook because knight to f4, hello, is checked. So queen h5 doesn't work, all right? That doesn't work. But when you put the rook on f1, you stop this check, and if black makes a waste move, now you can play queen h5. All right, now somebody is mentioning knight h5 check looks strong because there's no f6. Okay, I'm gonna move the king back, and what do you wanna do now? Queen where? Queen h6, again, doesn't work because of this. I guess I can put my king in the corner to deal with that. And now I'm going to play f5, and my queen is in the mix. So that doesn't work. And queen f6, that should work. Well, again, we're playing check. You could try to take this piece if you want to. Try to survive this one until there's a ton of checks that are coming at you. This is going to be rough. This is going to be rough. All right. Uh, check. You can't hide in the corner. You got to go into the game. And now we could trade. This is, probably, this is probably winning for white. It's down a pawn. We could go for the we could go for the end game. We could go for a position like this one. All right? We could go for a position like this one. So white, and just and just say we're gonna win an exchange and we're good to go. Even though how many of you are guaranteed to beat Magnus Carlson in a position like this? Probably most of you, right? Most of you out there like, y'all yeah, could beat Magnus in this position. I, I could definitely do it. I'm up in exchange, even though he has a pawn. I think I can pull it off. So a lot of analysis here, guys. A lot of analysis. But the correct, the best moves, white say, I, I'm going to judge this right. Knight g6 was the toughest defense. Uh, that would have lost anyway. So let's go back to, where is the moment we're talking about? Rook takes e2, queen g5 check, black play king h8, and white could, white decided to take care of business right here 
and played queen to h6. Now we have a sweet pattern because the knight guards this pawn, no problem. Black had to take. King takes. Black desperately played a check. And now white played king to f2. No worries hanging out on this square. All right. Now, by the way, we're not taking the rook. We got a nasty little idea coming down. So we're not taking the rook. But it's interesting because you could back into the corner, back up into the corner, and you're also still winning this position. Except when the guy plays bishop f5, guarding the mate and threatening bishop e4, now you got to sit back and go, wait, I thought I was mating right now. I thought it was over. I thought it was done. Like, what's going on? More tactics. More tactics, more little ideas. You see how Puzzle Rush would not help you here? Puzzle Rush just wouldn't help. It, it's, it's like you're estimating, you're calculating, you got all these things. It's, it's, not, it's not that simple. Chess is not that simple. Just studying a little bit of tactics. You've got to make the right decision. Maybe White made a bad decision sacrificing the bishop and have to solve the solve this very complex position where apparently the best move is something like queen dropping back and then c5 after the bishop drops back. According to the engine, this is crushing because of the diagonal pressure and you can always win the exchange. That's not helping you. Solving little puzzles is not helping here. Learning how to deeply calculate and evaluate positions, that's what's going to help you here. By the way, I said king to uh, king to h1 in this position actually King F2 is the simplest win. Knight G4, don't try it because knight takes is going to hurt your feelings badly with this long diagonal. Knight D3 does nothing because the king can go to E3. There's no queen B2 because that square is covered. The king is perfectly safe on this square. So this is just straightforward winning. There's one line I, I'm cheating. I didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't say, and that is now the game. This is the game, Bishop F5. The last gasp. The last gasp. Because now, if you take this, Black whew, whew, fell for it. Look at that <laughs> nastiness in your face. About to die. What do you do? Because the queen is about to show up. You drop the king here, obviously. That's made in one. And if you play the king here, the knight check and you name it, you got it. Game over. Last little trick, bishop f5. But not only a trick, it also defends the mate. Very important. It defends the mate. Until you see black, the move black has to face next, which is rook g1. This is sweet, right? This is just sweet. Now, black is threatened with mate in one. Thank you very much. I've guarded the g2 square. Thank you very much. And you can't capture this piece because of check. And we get an Arabian mate without the Arabian. All right. So that is that. Hello, I'm Lux. You would not have taken the bishop. Stop it. You know you wouldn't have. All right. Rook G1, a monster move. Threatening the mate. So what did Black do? Bishop G6. And now, finally, after years of research... We have a puzzle rush position. We finally have a true blue drop it on the board puzzle rush position for guys like Ray Robinson to go, oh, come on, this is easy. I solved this in one second. White to move wins on the spot. Finally, we get puzzle rush. And those of you who love puzzle rush, now you're like, oh, 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 I got it. I got it. I know what. And vain, oh my goodness, you would have been hurt. Your feelings would be so hurt. If you had played the move you said and uh, your sacking queens, all of you sacking queens and sacking rooks, your feelings would have been so hurt. I see Akhmad got it. But here is where Puzzle Rush comes in. Finally, it's white to move and win. First of all, you guys are very ambitious capturing this queen <laughs> after you try to checkmate. And then you look around and go, where's the mate? <laughs> where I need another piece. <laughs> I need another piece. What just happened? Okay. That's not the answer, second your queen. The other answer was, oh, I know this. Oh, oh, rook takes. I know this. Rook g6. No problem. No problem. 
and <laughs> Queens only guards eight seven. You're like, oh, I was winning, I was winning. What happened? I sacked my rook and I was winning. And like, oops, <laughs> like what just happened? What just happened? By the way, here's what I'm saying to you, folks. In Puzzle Rush, you'd be going so fast, right? You'd be going so fast, you'd be like, Rook takes. And then Bond takes, and you go, what? Oh, damn. <laughs> eh. All right? Or you might sack your queen. Thinking, no. eh. It's guys like Ray Robson who instantly see the third option, which is Knight takes on 8-7. Nice little tactical point. The point being, of course, that bishop takes is meant by queen f6 check. And this is how they do. That's mate. All right. Knight takes h7. Bomb drops game over nothing to do. This is game. What happened? F5 happened in the game. Black has no relevant checks. Like if you try, for example, here, knight to d, uh, knight to d3, the engine will say, you can't do it. What you trying to do? What you trying to do? You're pinned. Forget about that. So that's frozen. That's frozen because of the problem of queen f6. Uh, you could play your rook here, but this check is coming. This check is just pain. Like you go here now, mate. Sorry. That's that's death. So none of your pieces can move. And meantime, this discovery is being threatened. F5 was played. Knight f6 check and black played bishop back to h7. Please, mister, please leave me alone. Uh, no, rook takes g8 is mate because of the pin. You cannot capture back and white wins the game. Queen b2, how is queen b2? That's just tossing a queen away. So that doesn't work either. Game over.